What is up guys? Welcome back to another GeekerWatt video. In this video, I'm going to be covering off the top 10 cases to buy for your next gaming PC build in 2022. Not only will I be giving you my top suggestions for a range of different budgets, but I'll also be showing you what to look out for and what to avoid when picking a chassis for your next system. Let's do this. This video will be split down into three different sections. Budget cases, then mid-range options, then ones that cost you a little more money, with a few honourable mentions at the end. Now at the budget end of the spectrum you've got cases like the Techware Forge M series. This case here has plenty of mesh at the front with a nice internal layout and support for micro ATX motherboards. When it comes to budget cases those that support the micro ATX motherboard form factor would seem to be the best option. Not only is it the best value motherboard form factor but the cases are slightly more compact, great for size and saving money on materials like the aluminium and glass but they're not so small that you pay a premium and brand haven't gone out the way to make them as tiny as humanly possible. A couple of other chassis in this budget that we definitely recommend, the Cooler Master MB320L and 311L come in around the $40 mark and are utterly superb, as is the Aero Cool Quantum Mesh, a case that US viewers may find a little harder to get hold of, but is still an absolutely fantastic choice and comes in often around $29. Wow. Aesthetics obviously play a huge part in this, but when it comes to a budget case, there is a few things I would look out for. A mesh front panel or plenty of fans to compensate or help to keep airflow really strong and keep the temperature of your components low. Always a bonus in a budget build and a tempered glass side panel will help you to admire your work when it comes to how good your system looks. Avoid cases that include a bundled power supply as this will be pretty weak and not something I would recommend that you use to power up your system from a reliability perspective. But what about if you want to spend a bit more money? You want a slightly larger build like this system built inside the MSI VLUX 100 p Well in the mid-range category there are a lot of contenders. I'll cut straight to the chase though. My favourite ATX case is actually the Corsair 4000 series. This is available in an airflow or a non-airflow version. The non-airflow version has a glass panel with more included fans and Corsair IQ support, making it in my opinion a better choice than the mesh option. Coming in around the $99 mark, though I've seen offers for around $89 with rebates, these are sensational middle of the road cases with some really, really great features. They contend really well with something like this MSI case, which is at number two in my list. I didn't expect to be recommending an MSI chassis in a video like this, especially considering their Gunyir and Sekira cases, which preceded this Velox line, were good but not fantastic. This changes a lot of that though. With really great GPU support, you can see here we've got a long Supreme card in with a radiator and a set of fans, nice to see. You also get 360mm fan or radiator mounting up top with four included 120mm units. Airflow is great and while RGB could be slightly improved, the price point of this chassis is pretty extraordinary. But what if either of these cases, aesthetically at least, aren't quite doing it for you? We'll try this, option three on the mainstream list, the new NZXT H510 flow. With much better airflow than the previous H510 offerings, a really nice two-tone design with different colour options available, it looks fantastic. NZXT did let themselves down a little bit though by not including more than two fans nor any that are RGB, but it does have a competitive price point which will allow you to spend a bit more cash on decking it out with some nice RGB fans. It works best when combined with an NZXT cooler that gives you the fans included, so if you're planning to go for an NZXT CPU cooler anyway, this isn't going to be a point of contention for you. I just think that with all the great features, NZXT let themselves a little bit down with this chassis, but the price point should reflect that. And if you like NZXT, this is a better option in my view than the Elite, which does struggle significantly when it comes to airflow and temperatures. But what about if that's not quite doing it for you? You've got some more money to spend, you want a really high-end build, what case should you go for? Well, there's two major options I would recommend. The first is the Corsair IQ 5000 series. We recently did a full custom loop water cool build, and we're going to change this up next year and do a hardline system in it as well. So keep your eyes peeled for that, and make sure to get subscribed to the channel. If you aren't already, you do not want to miss it. With three included fans at the front and one at the rear, Obviously, the IQ options of the case have plenty of tempered glass and give you some great RGB included as standard. Corsair IQ is fantastic as well, and having this IQ controller hub built into the rear of the case is a massive, massive bonus. The build quality is pretty much second to none, and Corsair have done an incredibly good job here. Now, one thing about this case that you could perhaps see as a criticism is that it is still pretty generic. It's basically the same as their 4000 series, but bigger. What if you want something a little bit different? Well, here comes the Leon 
namely O11D series. Now the O11D has become quite a pivotal case in our industry. It's cuboid design that looks a bit like a fish tank, allows you to admire your components from all angles. The O11D Mini is a great value option, but is quite tricky to build in, only supporting small form factor power supplies, weird for a case that fits full ATX motherboards, but the standard full-size O11D is also a great choice. You will pay a little bit more money for the Lee and Lee privileges, but these two cases are crackers, and they look great, they make aesthetically for an incredible build. You will just need to do a bit more planning and make sure you pop in plenty of fans, as otherwise these cases can look a little bit on the empty side. So we're about seven or eight cases in, we've got a couple more to go, and it brings us on nicely to the final section today, my honourable mentions. These are cases that are great, that do something really, really well, but are perhaps ones I wouldn't recommend for a first time builder, due to their complexity or quirks. And the first of those is the Cooler Master NR200P Color Series. The NR200P from Cooler Master was a fairly bland and boring case, until someone took it into Microsoft Paint or Photoshop, got the hue saturation slider, and started having a bit of fun. Available in like a teal, and a pink, and a green, and a blue, and black, and a white, and a grey, and absolutely everything, Cooler Master have gone colour mad, and it looks fantastic. It's really small as well as far as form factor goes, and you get a tempered glass side panel, so you can show off your system. Temperatures might be a bit on the high side, fitting an all-in-one cooler in is possible, but still a challenge, and the new NR200P Max, which also complements this case, provides triple slot GPU support. It's a complicated case to get your head around, and this video isn't going to be the one that explains it, but if you're looking for something small that's a bit different, I'd implore you to go ahead and check it out. I would also implore you to go ahead and check out this case, the Thermal Tape Tower 100. Now this case isn't that weird, it's just a form factor that we've never really seen before. I like the way it's designed, I like what Thermaltake have done, and I like how Thermaltake are always pushing the boundaries and trying to do something a little bit different. Once again, would I recommend this for a first time builder? Probably not, it's easier to build in than the NR200P, but still a little bit of a challenge. It's a great looking case though, and I think it works really well if you're looking for a centerpiece. And thermal take, as it happens, coincidentally, I've also got lots of different colour options available on this one too, in limited edition runs. So make sure you check those out, alongside all the other cases I've mentioned in this video, down in the description below. And with that, that pretty much wraps it up for our top 10, at least for the first half of 2022. We'll be sure to update you later in the year, and I hope you found this video useful, with some cases you just might not have considered before. If you enjoyed this video though, make sure to get subscribed to see more from us. Thanks a lot for tuning in, and as always, we'll see you in the next one. Come on.